Welcome back. As we earlier said, uh, we're going to be giving you golden tips over how to maintain uh, the best nu um, nutritional system or nutritional uh, plan uh, for uh, this particular time of the year, and especially with the uh, pandemics and uh, the uh, uh, different uh, difficulties that uh, sometimes the whole world is exercising. Today, we're going to uh, be talking uh, about modifying our nutritional system to the best system that would be uh, capable with uh, uh, or could be suitable to our needs, our characters, and also our uh, particular uh, uh, specific uh, health system, and also uh, the diet. Uh, we're very delighted to be having with us Dr. Nahla Bakri. She's a nutritional expert, and she's going to give us uh, a very good package of golden tips for the best nutrition. Good morning, Dr. Bakri. Good morning. How are you doing? Let's first talk about the different types of eating. Uh, before air, you were talking about emotional eating, right? Yes. And it just caught my ears. I thought it might be really interesting and essential to uh, get the best knowledge about the reasons for emotional eating. However, we all know uh, the reasons. But let us first explain to the viewers what is the emo emotional eating and um, why does it happen sometimes and how can we handle it? Okay, there are different types of eating disorders. It's an eating disorder kind of, but emotional eating is when you uh, start to eat, um, like uh, starting a binge, binge eating, meaning mm. eating and you cannot stop mm. because of emotional reasons. There is also boredom eating, that you're eating because you're bored. This happened a lot during COVID. People are just sitting at home, they're not doing anything, they're bored watching TV, so they start eating more than uh, they eat. There is a lot of uh, comfort eating. I'm just not comfortable, so I want to be comfort, so I go to comfort foods. So there's a lot of types of eating, but you know, we, we all, it all lies under the, the, the word emotional. And why do I get emotional in the first place? I get emotional because some things affect me. People affect me, places affect me, and situations affect me. Sometimes even types of foods affect me. Like, you know, chocolates or ice cream or pizza or any types, certain types of food affect me. So it starts the cycle of emotional eating, mm. which a lot of people are complaining from and it's affecting the health and actually it affects the immunity and as you said these times we need to boost our immunity to mm. be ready for the fourth wave uh, of covid mm. it is so essential that we control emotional eating right but when you talked about the types of emotional eating and the reason and source um, you referred somehow to uh, the person himself as the reason for it uh, or, out, or the other way around I mean the outsider world yes. or sometimes it might be the person itself some might debate with you and say that if we uh, just uh, bring it on the outsider uh, influences uh, on us then we won't be able to achieve anything we have to control our needs we have to control ourselves and uh, our will and we can overcome anything that might bother us from the outside world. That's true. It's easier said than done, though, because it's psychological. Mm. And, you know, psychological factors. I was going to say that thing. Uh, and anxiety is affecting us tremendously because of COVID. Of course, oh. Don't undermine the effect. We are going to the third year of this disease, and it's really affecting our psycho psych psyche. So it, people are eating more. They feel like, okay, what the hell? You know, I'm not doing anything, and we're not working. We're not going out, so I might as well eat. It's making me happy, and they want to be happy. Mm. So I'm going to give you the recipe for mm. uh, any eating disorder, whether it's uh, comfort eating, boredom eating, or emotional eating, or just uh, binge eating disorder. You need to eat to lose. You cannot just... Um, Imagine that you're going to control your emotional eating without eating. Like you cannot stop eating to control your eating disorder. You have to eat. You have to eat regular meals. Uh, you have to eat certain types of food that keeps you full and keeps you replenished and hydrated for your cells to know that, okay, now I'm fine. Then the signals will come that I do mm. not need to eat that much. You understand? Oh, so you need right. to eat to control mm. eating. Mm. Kind of. I need to eat healthy. I need to eat within Certain my Certain types of food. Mm. 
yes certain mm. types of food that uh, are i call them the high satiety foods the foods that satisfy you and luckily they are so available in the egyptian market like bananas like corn like uh, sweet potatoes for instance mm. like popcorn mm. like um, sweet potato yes sweet fattening po it's not fattening if you if you don't if you just eat uh, one or two i heard it's very healthy it's very healthy i'm saying oh. it's not fattening mm -hmm. actually these mm -hmm. are the types of food that mm. are called the high satiety foods they fill you up and they replenish your body so you really feel like you don't need to um, go for other uh, wrong type of foods. Mm. Uh, I just, I will interrupt this very important uh, uh, in, uh, conversation uh, to uh, withdraw our knowledge uh, that we are uh, bringing life, uh, the arrival of the uh, Arab delegates uh, to the Baghdad Conference for Cooperation Partnership that kicks off uh, today. Uh, and uh, um, we are seeing, as we are seeing here live uh, over our screen, uh, that uh, uh, several Arab delegates are uh, going to be registered in uh, for uh, this uh, uh, conference. And of course, it is going uh, to be attended by uh, different Arab and uh, uh, Arab countries and Middle East countries like Egypt, like Turkey, Iran. Uh, also, Saudi Arabia is attending um, other Gulf countries like Kuwait. We also have uh, Jordan that is attending. We have Qatar. Uh, we have uh, the United Arab Emirates. And we have uh, other also European countries, among them France. Of course, this is a very important uh, summit that is going uh, to be held. And uh, it is also uh, going to be attended by uh, 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 international Arab uh, communities and leagues, of course, on top of them, the Arab League. And uh, of course, uh, with the Arab League, we'll be attending uh, the Gulf Cooperation uh, Council and uh, another league that is uh, the Organization for Islamic Cooperation, uh, three very important uh, Arab uh, uh, communities and uh, bodies that are going uh, to be attending uh, the sessions of this uh, Baghdad Conference for Cooperation and Partnership that is going to be kicking off uh, today on its uh, first day. Um, of course, uh, the timing of uh, this uh, conference also holds importance, as we see. Uh, officials are on their way to receive the uh, leaders uh, arriving uh, from uh, with the Arab uh, delegates or representatives uh, with Arab de delegates from different Arab countries and different European countries and Middle East countries. Uh, as you we were saying, that the timing uh, of this conference holds importance and holds significance. Why? Because this summit takes place uh, within the Taliban uh, regime taking over of Afghanistan and the U.S. Uh, troops withdrawal uh, decision to withdraw uh, from uh, Afghanistan uh, uh, following uh, a series of uh, events uh, that started with uh, the departure of uh, most of the U.S. Uh, troops and uh, uh, several Afghan uh, citizens uh, clinging in uh, to be able to leave with the troops uh, escaping the Taliban regime. And uh, that was followed uh, later on uh, earlier with a deadly attack in Kabul, uh, uh, also a terrorist attack that claimed the lives also uh, of 13 uh, of the U.S. and European uh, uh, um, personnel uh, troops inside Afghanistan who were during the process of evacuation which was a very sad event of course killing also Afghan citizens of course uh, this uh, uh, bombing or, or the terrorist attack is is going to strongly overshadow uh, this conference for cooperation and partnership that starts today as we can see uh, probably uh, one of the delegates uh, uh, have arrived, or they are awaiting uh, the first uh, delegate who, uh, that are going to uh, arrive in a few moments. Of course, uh, this conference uh, is important because it is uh, going to tackle 
all means of solving the regional crises uh, that are looming uh, um, in the region. On top of them is the Afghan crisis, and of course, uh, uh, they're going also. Uh, the topics are going also to revolve around Iran and uh, maintaining uh, uh, nuclear weapons, uh, which is going also uh, to be uh, taken uh, inside uh, the uh, panel of discussion. Uh, of course, uh, it's going also to tackle means, uh, positive means like uh, establishing strong partnership, economic partnership, political partnership, uh, cultural partnership, uh, of course, uh, uh, Pre President Abdel Fattah Sisi have arrived right now, and uh, he is being welcomed by officials um, generously and uh, accompanied <coughs> inside. Huge popularity for one of the uh, 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 most popular uh, Arab and Egyptian leader in the region, received uh, with uh, respect uh, uh, and uh, being uh, uh, taken to uh, attend uh, the, uh, this important uh, conference that is uh, uh, gathering uh, um, the uh, main uh, uh, Arab uh, uh, countries and uh, European ones also at the same time. Of course, as you all said, um, uh, the, as we said now, that uh, the conference is tackling uh, the means of solving uh, the regional crisis. And as we can see, that President Sisi is uh, uh, accompanied uh, uh, by officials uh, uh, on the red carpet on his way uh, to uh, attend the conference that is going to start today morning. Of course, President Sisi is arriving with an Egyptian uh, delegate. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the important topics that are expected to be tackled uh, in this uh, important conference are establishing partnership, uh, uh, establishing cooperation, and also uh, economic uh, uh, integration. Uh, of course, uh, um, uh, Iraq is looking forward to build itself again. And uh, that's why it is uh, keen uh, on uh, establishing uh, uh, economic partnership with different uh, Arab uh, countries and European ones. Uh, of course, uh, Iraq have uh, uh, taken this opportunity uh, to host uh, the main uh, Arab countries over uh, in, Iraq, um, in the capital for the conference uh, to also uh, build uh, and uh, uh, resume ties uh, uh, with them uh, concerning the economic partnership, the economic integration, uh, of course all its neighbors and also European countries and uh, all concerned friendly countries uh, resolving uh, the different crises uh, with its uh, neighbors and uh, inside Iraq. And as we uh, can see, they are accompanied uh, over uh, to inside uh, uh, the residence to be able to prepare to, to attend uh, the inauguration of the conference. President Abdel Fattah Sisi, the Egyptian president, Also, as we uh, know that uh, Iraqi President Burham Saleh also have earlier uh, stressed that uh, this Baghdad uh, summit uh, said also is focusing on uh, tackling or uh, finding means of uh, regional uh, peace uh, um, uh, project um, or an international forum uh, to communicate with the G20, which is also another important uh, focus of the summit. The summit also comes that it uh, provides a distinguished uh, platform uh, to uh, deliver the successful uh, experience of Egypt, uh, how it have uh, uh, contained itself in a very, very short 
and um, in, a, in a very spe in a speedy time and, and build itself once again uh, in only less than seven years we're going to go to a short break and we'll come back to you to resume the breakfast show so stay with us Be the first to know. The news live at the site of the event. Information on events as they are happening. If it's breaking news, it's Nile TV. Welcome back and also taking it from uh, the Baghdad conference to over here uh, in the studio live and of course with us is Dr. Nahla Bakri, she's a nutritional expert and we were talking about the emotional eating. Of course, as, soon, uh, as much as we get stressed, as much as we get anxiety, we tend to resort to food for comfort. So uh, some people don't do the, the same thing. Some, sometimes you become so scared that you need to curb on food. Uh, I, I, um, in spite of the fact that you sometimes binge on food when you are uh, uh, in anxiety. But uh, when you become so much depressed or so much uh, scared of something, you become uh, you abstain from uh, taking some food. people do that some people what do you think about that yeah case? some people have an eating disorder which is like the anorexia nervosa or like bulimia where they eat mm. and they throw up you know mm. uh, but then again it's another eating disorder or they uh, they eat and they don't uh, stop both of them both sides of the spectrum are really wrong and we need to control that mm. and the recipe for this and that are almost the same First of all, you need to uh, make a list of all the, the things that really uh, makes you anxious, like certain people, certain places, certain situations, or certain foods. And first of all, you try to avoid these, at, you know, because you are weak. You know what I mean? It's as if you are facing a monster and you want to get strong before you face that monster. Mm. So you really need to, in your brain, in your mind, you need to see, okay, certain people and places and situations and foods are like a monster. So I try to avoid them, avoid them as much as I can while I get strong and while I rebuild my body. How do I rebuild my body? By food also. By eating every three to four hours, small and frequent, the small frequent meals, you know, um, and water, of course, to hydrate my body and exercise on a regular basis. Mm. What I'm going to do is build my immunity. I'm going to, the signals of uh, hunger and satiety are going to return again. And I'm going to be back in control uh, of my eating. Mm. Uh, so you actually need to eat to control eating. Not, not the of reverse. Course. No, because uh, people because think, okay, if I fast entirely, then I'm going right. to Some people explode. just decide, okay, today I'm going to start dieting and they just stop eating, thinking that this is the right way. And then what happens is that they go back and they binge again, because of course you deprive your body from the essential um, stores that they need, the essential nutrients that they need. But once you start eating those nutrients, and the best thing is thinking what comes in season. Like, for instance, right now we have mangoes, we have watermelons, we have melons, we have fruits, uh, we have yogurt. And so try as much as possible to eat the raw foods, which is uh, just as raw as possible, as simple as possible, not elaborate foods, okay? Mm -hmm. Very simple uh, fruits, vegetables, yogurt, cheese, bread the egyptian the beautiful egyptian baladi bread you know of course just very delicious very delicious the arish cheese the cottage cheese mm. Mm. all the basic cottage foods cheese, huh? a lot of olive oil for antioxidants olives all the mm. beautiful green stuff that we have arugula lettuce mm. okay uh, tabula salad if you eat this every day you know hummus salad baba ghanouk salad all this if you eat this you're going to feel full and at the same time you're going to build your body again and you're going to reset this is the most important thing why do we get um, uh, hand, uh, tend to hold on certain types of food because i see this a lot with my clients mm. like they say i cannot live without chocolate or i cannot live without this or that 
because our taste buds um, are used to this by now, by eating everyday sugars and this. But if you reset your taste buds, if you, if you follow this plan and you reset your taste buds, mm. you're not going to you enjoy the healthy. You're going to enjoy other foods and the, this hold is going to break now. Okay. And you won't enjoy them, the sugary uh, taste. Once you go back to them again, if you do taste them again, you feel like, oh, they're too much sugar or too much salt. You know, they're mm. not going to be as nice. Because why did I believe that they are so nice? Because I mixed my emotional state with my physical state. I mixed the hunger with the emotional. This is the problem. This is the emotional eating. When I mix two uh, files together, there is the physical hunger, like I really need to eat because I'm physically hungry and if I don't eat, I'm going to get sick and mm. eventually die. But then emotionally, my, my mind tells me, oh, if I don't eat this, I will die. If I don't eat this pizza now, if I don't eat this burger now, you see what I mean? This is when you mix. But, but then I, I need to ask you an important question. How do I different, honestly speaking, it, it's a problem for too many people. How do I make a difference or find out the difference between uh, I really, if I'm going to die of uh, hunger or I don't need to eat at all. No, I, I, this sometimes is you don't recognize this. Do not eat at all. This is not normal. You or have I to don't eat. need to eat. I mean, I'm not that hungry. Sometimes you cannot, I mean, decide. Yes. Okay. You if know. you know, as I said, you have to eat regularly or while you're awake every three to four hours regularly. Maximum very small time amounts. amounts. Very small amounts, as big as your hand. Okay. So, mm. for instance, the fist, as a hand like this. Mm. For instance, if I want to eat now breakfast, I'm going to have a sandwich as big as my hand. Mm. A sandwich of beans, a sandwich of tamia, or two small sandwiches with salad. Okay, done. Mm. Or eggs and bread and salad, as big as my hands. So, if it's more than my hand, then this is too much. This is the science that tells me this. Hmm. Okay, so everything is with your no hands. No matter how big I am, how small no matter, I am. Because big people have big hands and small people have small hands. So oh, it's okay. your hands. That's unfair. <laughs> no, that's fair <laughs> because your stomach is the size of your hands. Of your fist. Okay. Okay. Oh. So then your hand is your guide. You don't need anything else. Okay. You don't need scales. You don't need anything. Hmm. So you have your hand and you put your sandwich. Okay, fine. I'll eat it. Okay. Hmm. So if you put lunch, for instance, rice and the meat and the vegetables all has to be the size of this okay hmm. more than this is too much what about the fruits if you it's, another no, it's an extra uh, another portion fruits and vegetables are another portion mm, thanks to god yes mm -hmm. <laughs> but but at the same time some would some would say that uh, because there are several experiences several diets and everything uh, some would talk about the uh, uh, broken uh, fasting Intermittent fasting, fasting. Inter right. Mm -hmm. I don't know the t term exactly, yeah. but uh, fasting on several periods. I mean, I have to fast because their uh, theory is that when you don't eat, I mean, when you don't eat that much, you don't feel hungry. When you eat, I, I, I personally feel that when I eat, I feel hungry. That's when true. I don't eat, I don't feel hungry. That's why sometimes I can't figure out if I'm hungry or no. No, this is... Uh, and this is a bad I'm glad that you asked me this question because intermittent fasting does not mean that you keep not eating on certain port. No, it's just a big stretch of time that you don't eat. Exactly. One stretch. Which Only helps one. some other people. Yes, which is good. I agree. Mm. I like intermittent fasting. Like eating fasting. in the early morning and then eating at, uh, I mean yes, in the Yes, but then evening. when you eat, for instance, you're going to fast for 16 hours. No, no food, but you can drink water. Of course, and coffee. You and can drink coffee, course. you can drink tea, or you can mm. drink herbal drinks with no sugar. One orange. Uh, no. No, 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 Nothing at all. no calorie, no mm. calorie. So herbals, herbals like uh, uh, cinnamon, like ginger, like uh, mint. Okay. okay? Mm. So then you have one stretch with no food, minimum 12 hours, maximum 20 hours. So you can do the intermittent fasting between 12 and 20 hours. Mm. But then when you eat, you also have to eat every three hours. I eat small amounts. So, yes, I mean, it's a common foundation that we do not eat more than our first of the hand. Exactly. That's it. And then exercise is very important to build mm. your immunity and to, to do full de detoxification. And when I mean exercise, then I do not really mean that you have to go to the gym or something very expensive. You can mm. do it at home. There's a lot of uh, videos that you can follow. You can do floor exercises. You can dance. Mm. You can ride a horse. You can ride a donkey. You know, you can ride a bike. Mm. You can swim. Anything that you, uh, any form of exercise so that you can eh, 
uh, detoxify your body and build your immunity. When you build up your immunity, not only that you're going to fight COVID, also you have going to have clear vision to, uh, to this emotional eating. You're going to decide better. You're going to make better choices. Mm. You see what I mean? Of course. Mm. I'll be out of the situation. Yes, But exactly. at the same time, we need urgently to know now what is the uh, best uh, um, uh, types of food that we take for our immunity? I, uh, to our knowledge, we keep, I mean, following uh, some tips here and there, or read it or something. Uh, they say like different oils uh, uh, would create immunity, like habit al baraka or the black seed mm -hmm. uh, oil, and uh, flaxseed oil also is yes. important. And of course, oranges and uh, b um, um, all the vitamin C uh, extracts and everything. Y we need you to inform us, give us tips about what to eat uh, for to boost our immunity. You have a lot of vitamins and minerals that are, um, you know, that boost your immunity. Vitamin A, B, C, D, E, mm. and uh, and zinc, folate, iron, and uh, a lot of minerals that are really important for your immunity. Mm. So, in, in in order for you to get all that, you make sure that you eat your fruits and vegetables from five different colors because they have different types. For instance, mm. the orange color has the vitamin C and A, okay. which is so important for immunity. So for instance, what's orange in, orange in color? Not only carrots, oranges, oranges, carrots, mangoes, uh, apricots, uh, anything, th the, the, the pepper that is orange in color, anything that's ha sweet potatoes, mm. all right? Mm. Anything that has carotenoids are very good for the eyes and mm. for the immunity, so it's so important. Everything that you said, oils are vitamin E. Vitamin E is so good, not only for the immunity, but also for the skin. Mm. And so all the seeds have vitamin E. Seeds. Mm. Seeds and nuts, they have vitamin E. Mm. Olives, of course, and antioxidants. So if you get just, as I said, the Mediterranean diet, we live in a Mediterranean country, we are so lucky. And of course, vitamin D comes from the sun. So get exposed to the sun as mm. much as the possible. early hours. Yes, because Before you need to only just half an hour. If you mm. are a little bit fair in the skin, you need only 10 to 15 minutes. That's all. If you are, tend to be a little bit darker, you need a little bit more, mm. like half an hour. So mm. between 15 minutes and half an hour a day is so important for vitamin D. Okay. Mm. So once you get all this together, you, you are going to boost your immunity. But if mm. you are going to eat sugar, be careful because sugar really reduces your immunity. The processed sugar reduces your immunity. So if you have to have a little bit of sugar, please use honey or molasses because at least they have iron and they have other minerals that are good for your immunity. Mm. Okay, so if you want to do a dessert, for instance, do a sweet potato with some molasses, for instance, or it's better than just adding sugar, cakes with sugar, you know, white flour and sugar are the worst thing for your immunity right now. Mm. Um, tell us about also the, the good diets or good nutrition for a woman, for example, for a working woman. Yes. Not being biased or anything, but uh, women would need a, a special diet because they have the, in several, uh, I mean, uh, responsibilities like bringing, uh, bringing up the kids and taking them to school and bringing them back from school, cooking and then, uh, you know, shopping a grocery and then a or if she's a working woman and all that. So um, if you... The women, yes, the women, it's so important for women to consume omega-3, the omega-3 diet. Mm. Omega-3 is a, is a nutrient mm. that is not the nuts made the, in mm. the body, but actually it's uh, outsourced from fish mm. and from nuts mm. and from uh, whole grains and also mm. from avocados and, and chocolate and pure That's cacao, pure cacao. Mm. not just the commercial chocolate, the dark chocolate or pure mm. cocoa. So for a woman, the best thing is to get her some seeds. The flax seeds are mm. so high in omega-3 and flax seeds are so abundant in Egypt. Mm. You can get them from the, um, just the herbs store. You don't have to pay so much money for it. Mm. Just add some flax seeds to your, uh, to your food. Mm. Add fish three, three times a week. Uh, always consume whole grains like farik instead of rice, mm. uh, oats instead mm. of uh, breakfast cereals, mm. you know, and, and also arugula our fi and molokheya, of course. It's they're the all greens. tasty. They're all tasty. <laughs> and nice. Uh, unfortunately, we ran out of time. It was very precious having those tips. Thank you so much uh, for coming this uh, morning, Dr. Nahla Bakri, nutritional expert. You have a very beautiful day. You too. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to go to a short break and we'll come to continue the breakfast show. So stay with us.